today is the first real day of amazing summer Aussie sun. So I've got a few projects on the go today. I've got some mangoes ripening up in the sun, which I'm going to be dehydrating later. So look out for another video on that. But today in this video, what I want to share with you is a bit of an experiment I'm doing cooking in my solar oven, a solar pavlova. I will say this is not something I've tried before, so I'm hoping it will work. But I figure pavlova being one of those recipes that you cook long and slow should actually work really well in the solar oven if I can maintain that temperature of around 120 degrees. Now I've had my solar oven out preheating and this is the SunTaste Sun OK solar oven. It's been preheating for about the last hour or so and that's because when I put in my pavlova I need the temperature to be quite warm. So let's have a bit of a look at what the temperature is now. So that's looking like it's about 140 degrees Celsius at the moment. So I reckon that's nicely preheated. And by the time I've mixed up my pavlova, this is gonna be the perfect temp for this pavlova to go in. Now pavlova is one of those things that can be pretty intimidating to people, but it's actually really easy to make and it just takes some really simple ingredients. So all we're gonna to use today is four eggs, some caster sugar, and there'll be a cup of that, some arrowroot powder, two tablespoons of that one. If you don't have arrowroot powder, you can also use corn flour and also some white vinegar. And we'll be using two teaspoons of that. And these four simple ingredients is what will make up the pavlova. Now there is one important piece of equipment you'll need and that is a good mixer. And that's because the secret to a good pavlova is being able to beat the mix really well. So I'm gonna be using my KitchenAid mixer today. You can also use a hand mixer for this if you've got one of those, but basically any stand or hand mixer where you can really whip up that mix, that's gonna be pretty key to this recipe. Let's get started. The first thing I need to do is separate my eggs. And that's because we use the egg whites in this recipe and we don't want any yolk. In fact, when you do this, it's really important that you don't get any yolk into your egg white. And that's because you'll find the egg whites won't whip up well if there's any oils or fats as will come from the yolk in that egg white mix. So let's get these cracked. Here are my egg yolks and I can use those in other recipes. I quite like using them for things like custards. You can also do lemon curds and stuff like that. And of course, if you don't have something you wanna use these for straight away, you can freeze them up. For this recipe, here's our all important egg whites. And as you can see, there's no signs of egg yolk in here, so that should whip up beautifully. Now before I start whipping up my egg whites, I want to have one cup of sugar ready to go. And that's because as we're whipping up those whites, we're actually going to slowly add in some sugar. So we want this ready. Here's our one cup of caster sugar. Now you might be wondering whether you can use normal sugar in this recipe. It is preferred that you use caster sugar and that's because you really want the sugar to dissolve well into your egg mixture when you're whipping it up. And if you've got a really large granule of sugar, often it won't fully dissolve and the recipe just isn't the same. So if you do have regular sugar, a quick trick that you can do if you don't have caster sugar is to pop your regular sugar in the blender, give it a bit of a blitz up and that will create that finer granule and that will be perfect for this recipe. Now that we've got our sugar ready to go, we can start beating up these egg whites. And we want to do that on the highest speed of your mixer. You can see how the egg whites have started looking a little bit foamy now. This is where I want to start adding in my sugar and you just want to really slowly pour that in. This is actually one of the tricks to a good pavlova, is not dumping in all your sugar at once. You 
can see here how it's starting to look a lot thicker and a lot glossier and it's starting to form peaks which is basically where it starts to stand up. Once it starts to form really solid peaks that's when this is going to be ready and I'll show you look what that looks like in a moment. All right that's starting to form those beautiful peaks that we're looking for and it's at this point that I want to add in my vinegar and also the corn flour or arrowroot as I'm using today. So let's pop those in. Firstly, two tablespoons of our arrowroot powder or corn flour. Most recipes will say to sift this, but you tend to find these days that you don't have a lot of caking with products. So it's pretty fine just to pop that straight in. And then we need two teaspoons of our white vinegar. Boop. Let's call that two teaspoons. And then it's just a matter of turning it back on again. Now at this point, you don't want to overbeat it. I've just had that for probably about another 20 or so seconds. And that's enough. If you beat it too much, once you've added in your corn flour or arrowroot powder, it can create a bit of a tougher texture to your pavlova. So really all you're trying to do at this stage was just mix that in thoroughly throughout the mixture. Now, the other thing I wanna show you at this point is the texture of our egg mix. You probably see here that it's actually sticking to the bottom of the beater and it stands up nicely. That there is what we're looking for. That texture there is what we call a stiff peak. And that is the texture you're looking for for the perfect pavlova. The next step is preparing the pan that we're going to cook this on. And what I wanna do is just line that with a little bit of baking paper. Now today I'm cooking this in the solar oven. So what I don't wanna do is line this entirely with white paper that's gonna reflect a lot of sunlight. I wanna keep as much of this nice black surface of the tray visible as possible so that it absorbs lots of heat and cut it into a circle and that will be the diameter of the pavlova that I'm going to put into this pan. And then it's just a matter of mounding up this wonderful pavlova mixture onto that baking paper. Can you see how beautiful and glossy this is? That means that that sugar is beautifully melted through the egg and we're not going to have any of those crunchy bits of undissolved sugar. Now at this point, I do want to shape it up just a little bit. So what I want to do is just kind of gently spread it out. I don't want to poke at this too much though, because I don't want to lose any of that air that we've mixed into this wonderful pavlova mixture. All right, that's looking perfect and ready to go into the solar oven. I'm really interested in what the temperature is in here at the moment because normally when you pop this in your indoor oven you start it at about 150 degrees celsius and then you reduce the temperature to about 120 for the balance of the cook and i can see in here it's sitting at about 140 maybe just a smidge over 140 degrees celsius at the moment so that's actually not too bad for starting off our pavel overcook today As always, I need to make sure it's oriented correctly. So let's do the shading test. I can see I've got a bit of shade on this side and not on this side, which means it's not directly facing the sun. And that just means I need to shift this around a little bit. 
until I get a bit of shading on this side. Remembering that we here are in the Southern Hemisphere. Still a little bit more. There we go, that's perfect. And also let's make sure the reflector at the top is angled correctly. Let's see where our sunlight is in here. Well, that's definitely not right at the moment. So we want that light pretty much towards that front mirror and not spilling out of the solar oven itself. There we go, that looks great. Now it's normally at this point when you would put it in a conventional oven that you would turn it down to 120 degrees Celsius. Now, I've obviously lost a little bit of heat as I've opened up the back of the solar oven here today. And what I'm gonna do is just leave this for a little bit, see what the temperature does. And if I need to, what I can do is actually orient this slightly away from the sun and also bring down that reflector at the top a bit. And that will reduce the temperature to that 120 I'm looking for if it does still stay a bit higher than that. That uh, is looking absolutely amazing. But I can, however, see that my temperature is a little bit high in here at the moment. That's sitting on 135 degrees Celsius. Now it's not oriented directly towards the sun at the moment and I'm actually not going to adjust it. I'm actually going to leave it a little bit away from the sun just so that I can drop the temperature a little bit in the solar oven. Never thought I'd say this, but the temperature is actually a little bit too high at the moment. The other thing I'm gonna to do to remedy that is also bring down this reflector a little bit just so that there's not so much sunlight being reflected into the solar oven. 20 minutes has now passed and I wanna check the PAV in particular to see if the temperature in the solar oven has dropped down to around that 120 degrees Celsius that we're looking for. Look at that, the temperature is now dropped down a little bit to around 120 degrees Celsius. It's probably just a smidge over that but that is perfectly fine for cooking our pavlova today. With a lot of the stuff we cook in the solar oven, there's not a lot of babysitting you need to do, but when you are doing something like this recipe here today, where you need a particular temperature, it does require a little bit more babysitting. So just keep that in mind if you are going to cook something like this, because if you do need to maintain a certain temperature, getting that orientation and direction of your reflector right is going to be key. And it does take a little bit of time to manage that. An hour and 20 has now passed and I can see the temperature in here has actually dropped down to about 100 degrees Celsius. And that is because we have a bit of cloud about now. And as a result of that, we've been losing a bit of temperature in the solar oven. As a result of that cloud, this isn't quite cooked yet. And I can tell that by just kind of looking around the edges, you can see the edges are just starting to break away a little bit from the pav. And that's because there has been a bit of rise and fall of temperature in here, which is not your friend when you're making a pavlova. But when I do look at those edges, I can see that the meringue part that's solidified is actually still fairly thin. And I want that to cook up just a little bit more. And it still does look a little bit moist in the middle and towards the front part. So what I'm gonna do is leave it in here for probably about another 15 minutes or so, and then give it another check. So sometimes experiments work and sometimes you have a few issues. And today I'm gonna to share with you the issues that we've had. When I went to pull this out before, I found that it was still a little bit tacky in the middle. So what I've done is actually popped it back in the solar oven again and Thankfully, the sun has come out just in this minute, so what I can do is see if it will cook up a little bit more. Now, unfortunately, when you do pavlova, heat and then cool and then heat again is not your friend. So what's happening with our pav in here is it has actually kind of spread out a little bit and it's not as high and as fluffy as it normally is. And um, that sinking really is a bit of a result of that fluctuation in temperature that we've had today. But as I said at the start, this was gonna be a bit of an experiment and uh, that's how it's going. But what I am quite enthused to do is tomorrow to give this another go when hopefully we won't have the cloud around like we've had today. And I'm really keen to see how it goes when we have just consistent temperature throughout the entire cook. I think I'm gonna to have to concede that the cloud has beaten me today. Solar cooking is definitely no good. 
when you don't actually have sun to solar cook with. So this is what we've ended up with. It is actually perfectly cooked around the edges, but just the middle of this is still just a little bit tacky. You can see there, as I touch this little bit here, it's lifting a bit. Normally what you want is a nice crisp meringue on the outside, and then you get that nice fluffy kind of marshmallowy filling in the middle. And I have way too much marshmallow in the middle of this one today. So as I mentioned, I'm gonna give this another crack tomorrow. The forecast is looking a lot better tomorrow for no cloud. So hopefully tomorrow it's right because there was supposed to be no cloud today as well. And there's definitely plenty of cloud here. But don't worry, there'll be no waste. This one here, I can pop in the oven to finish up inside. And what I can do is crumble that up and that will be really nice in a bit of an eaten mess. Here we go, the next day, pavlova take two. And thankfully today, we have complete blue sky. So I think we'll have a lot better success today. So I've just taken the back off of the solar oven and you can see that this pav is looking way better than the one we had yesterday. It's sitting up nice and tall and it's got a way better color to it as well. And what I'm gonna do is pull it out and sit it side by side with our first attempt. All right, so here's our pav number well, one and our pavlova number two. And you can see there's a really big difference between the two of these. This one here has ended up really flat. It's also dried out a lot more and it's probably not gonna have a lot of marshmallow once we cut into it. Whereas this one here, it's nice and fluffy and puffy. You can see it's cracked a little bit on top and sunk in a little bit in the middle, but that's really no different to what happens when I do this in the oven anyway. Um, it's really just when you disturb it too early, what tends to happen is some of that meringue will start to break away and sink down into that marshmallow in the middle. But that is going to be a perfect pavlova. So let's dress it up. And the traditional Aussie toppings for a pavlova are whipped cream with strawberries, passion fruit, and you can use tin passion fruit pulp like I am here today, or you can use a fresh one and scoop that out if you've got some at home and also kiwi fruit. So I'm gonna chop up some of my beautiful homegrown strawberries here and open up this tin of passion fruit pulp and also chop up our kiwi fruit now. These homegrown strawberries are all looking pretty awesome, but this one here, is looking particularly special. So I think this one here is gonna be the one that I choose to be the feature strawberry in the middle of my pavlova. We're now gonna whip up our cream. Now there's nothing particularly special about this. It literally is just whipped cream that we're gonna pop on top. But just keep in mind, you do need thickened cream when you're doing a whipped cream. If you use a light cream, it's not gonna whip up. Alrighty, that's done. You don't wanna over whip it too much, otherwise it'll turn into butter. To assemble our pavlova, firstly what we're going to do is pop their cream on top and then we're going to add some fruit. So let's get our cream on first. And it's at this stage that you can hide some of those sins of your pavlova if it does have a few cracks on top, if you got a little too eager to pulling it out of the oven. Once your cream's on, it's time to decorate with your fruit. Now I'm using passion fruit, strawberry and kiwi because that's really the traditional Aussie flavors that we tend to put on top of a pavlova. But you can put lots of different toppings on these. I've seen some wonderful ones with mint and chocolate. Um, cherry makes a really nice flavor as well. But uh, let's go traditional today and dress this up with these ingredients here. Go. 
one completed pav. I thought I'd come outside today to cut this up, to have some of this wonderful Aussie dessert with this wonderful Aussie backdrop. That's exactly what I want to see. This layer of meringue here, and then our marshmallow, another layer of meringue, and our beautiful whipped cream and fruit. That's gonna make for a pretty delicious afternoon tea. Thanks for following along with this little experiment. We had some failures and some successes, but I definitely call my afternoon tea today a resounding success. Catch you later. For those astute people watching, you probably noticed I forgot the passion fruit pulp. Never mind, we can go on this bit now. And now really catch you later.